Hi, everyone. Welcome today. Um, thanks for joining me in the studio. It's a super warm day here in the Portland, Oregon area of the U.S. And um, so I have a bunch of fun stuff planned for you guys today. Um, hope you enjoy the little program I've got going. The first thing that I want to do is share a little bit, little little sneak peek tour of my garden. So I thought we, we thought we'd uh, show it off a little bit today. So I'm going to go out and go out and share it. So I did a ton of work out here this year, changed up quite a lot, um, but it's so beautiful and relaxing. Got a little, little bubbly water feature here. And some of these plants were here already. This is a euphorbia. And just it's just so fun to come out here every morning and see what new things are popping up and growing. Everything's growing really fast. It's pretty amazing. Just having so much fun with it. And oh, and this is the crepe myrtle. And it's such a beautiful tree. And I love these flowers. It's crazy how many flowers are on here. And they're so soft and kind of muppety. I just love it. Just super fun. So really enjoying it. And getting lots and lots of hummingbirds and butterflies and uh, so it's just uh, just a wonderful little haven for me. So um, one of these days we'll be doing a, a workshop out here. So look forward to that sometime. So yeah, so super fun to be able to. The, what? Shut the door. Oh I, yeah, I gotta shut, shut the, the door. door. I gotta shut the door so the light, the right thing in here. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Roger, for your help. Okay, so let's see, what are we gonna do today? Um, we have a couple of uh, fun things to share in terms of technology today, so we'll get to that. And of course, before I get to painting, I need to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you about uh, monthly pastel painting lessons online because we're just about halfway through our summer sale. So the sale, we have extended it to September 2nd, and you can use the coupon code WOOHOO3 to get uh, $37 off any order. So I'm sorry that doesn't apply to renewals, but everything else. And so I'm just so proud of the monthly lessons, and this is our third year of production, and we've really stepped things up quite a lot this this. Um, this last year of production. And so I just kind of want to run through a little bit, just a little bit of what you're going to get with the monthly subscription. So it's $32.99 billed a month billed annually if you do the annual and $39.99 a month if you do if you pay by the month. So what are you going to get in for that? So you get years one, two, and three. And uh, so even if you're monthly, you're going to get uh, one session from year one, one session from year two, one session from year three. And each session is three step-by-step -step lessons. So in so year one has a total of 36 step-by-step -step lessons and a pretty in-depth study guide. They're usually about 30 pages long for each month. Year two has 36 step-by-step -step lessons, plus year two also has 12 recorded live streams that are, we call them super streams. And those super streams are in-depth lessons, usually about two hours, and I'm going to focus on some kind of fundamental of painting or a subject. I like to kind of dive into something like uh, a color tune-up or simplifying how to start, how to finish in those. So they're really in-depth live streams. Uh, also, you're going to get 12 mileage trainings in year two, and those little trainings are things to just keep you engaged in pastel painting. If you don't have time to do a full lesson, maybe you have 15 minutes to do a little sketchbook uh, uh, exercise, a pastel exercise, and there's also a creativity cultivator in each one of those mileage trainings. So you get that for year two. In, for year three, 
You get 36 more step-by-step -step lessons. You get 12 live streams and they'll be, you can, you'll watch them live or you can watch them recorded. And also new feature in year three is during those live streams, the super streams, I am going to be doing critiques. And so I pick one or two student pieces and do a little critique of them, which I think is so valuable for everybody. We're all kind of making the same mistakes over and over again. We kind of get into these bad habits. And so um, I think even though I might not do a critique on your particular work, it usually is really helpful to everyone. The other thing, the new, another new feature in year three, which I'm really happy about is what I'm doing for year three is I'm doing a set, an extra video, a session wrap up. So say the session in year three was about chickens and ducks. Well, we just got done doing another lesson about chickens and ducks. And I really go in and kind of put a bow on everything, wrap it all together and talk about what I learned, how I'm going to approach that subject, ideas of how you might move forward in the future. And also you get the 12 mileage trainings for year three as well. we'll keep, we're keeping that. Also you get the Facebook group. And the Facebook group is uh, just for members. And it's such a supportive and amazing group. It's re we've really, I'm really, really proud of the Facebook group and how helpful everyone is. You don't need to be timid if you're a beginner or, um, or a professional. There's a whole spectrum of, of levels in there, people participating. And everyone is so helpful to one another and supportive and encouraging. It's just really amazing and nice to see that, um, you know, I'm, I'm really proud that we have that. Um, so the, as you can tell, this membership, and it's kind of, it is a membership. It's like a gym membership. You get to play as long as you, <laughs> as long as you're a paying member, and um, you don't get to use the equipment at the gym unless you're paying, and that's the way this subscription works. But you do have 24 hour a day, seven day a week uh, access to all the lessons as long as you are a member. So it's pretty much of an extraordinary value. I don't think there's anything else out there in the pastel world and I um, obviously put so much heart and soul into it and um, I believe in it I believe in its power to help people uh, be better painters to have the power of art in their lives and to be healing and to bring bring a lot of goodness into your life it has for me so with that we have a 30-day money-back guarantee and um, because I really want to uh, make sure that you're super happy with it. Okay, so that, that is it, I think, on, on that for a while. Um, if you have questions about it throughout the stream, you can certainly chime in with those. And we're already thinking about and planning out year four. We're gonna get busy creating content so we can all stay really inspired and continue learning in pastel for lots and lots of years to come. So um, hope that you go to the website and check it out, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and um, check out everything that we've got going on there. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, that's kind of it for that for now. I'm really happy to be sharing. Let's see. Oh, th these are some projects. Maybe later I'll share some of this. But today, I, so this week I... Uh, spent quite a lot of time painting and I was doing pastel painting and I was doing some little miniature studies and so I just um, wanted to talk to you guys about those so um, I got into the studio and just put my headphones on and just started painting just kind of wailing away and I love when I have the opportunity to do that and so I started doing some little minis See, where do we want to show them? Maybe up here? Yeah. So uh, if you've been watching lately, you've probably heard me say that I want to, that I feel like my paintings are a little too dark overall. So I've been very intentionally uh, working on lightening up the value overall of my painting. So here's one example. Now this one isn't quite as much that, 
but I do love the looseness of this guy and you know some of some of this a little bit lighter in value I think now this one this is an interesting little um, example of the the sort of pitfalls of the videotaping so um, I did I did this painting which is a kind of a, that dark marsh scene and I love this little piece I love how it turned out but um, we didn't get it right on film we were playing around with some different um, um, lenses and it just didn't look good so I did it again and that's the second one now it's funny because I don't think the second one is nearly as good as the first one so um, yeah it's 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 a little tricky sometimes when we're um, doing the videotaping then uh, let's see what else have I got here oh okay so I wanted to share let's go to the iPad see look at you guys this is the iPad and it's really fun that um, uh, I get to sh share this with you. So this is a reference photo of a little piece that I did. Um, and let's see, I have some progressions. So this um, this is the um, start of it. And I just, I when I was working on it, I was like, wow, okay, this is how I started. I just started with these color fields, really light and loose and um, fun. And then I wound up with, so this is my painting. Um, and, and, and it's right here. I can show it to you live as well. But I just really love how this one turned out, the quality of light and the, the uh, nice warmth of it. Super simple. And it didn't take very long. Kevin, how, how long is that? Because we videotaped this. That one is 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And we did video. We're, we're, Kevin's editing it, so we're going to make this available. I think we're going to probably make it available to monthly pastel painting lesson people because we do like to give the, the monthly people all the goodies that we can think of. So that's that. So let's take a look at what I'm going to paint today. And uh, get rid of that. Let's see. See where am I? Get rid of that and put that on there. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working on today, and I'm going to make another layer here. And um, okay, so thinking about this um, with that with an eye towards lightening up on the value. The thing that really concerned me about this is th this 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 shape back in here. I feel like I, my tendency overall would be to make that too dark right off the bat. There's so much dark down in here also, that, and it's really difficult to, uh, you know, really see what's going on in there. Also, this guy, you guys, this this uh, branch, it's really cool. It's really, it's, it's neat, but um, I also think it's a little superfluous. So all of this fun stuff in here, uh, I think I'm going to edit that out. That's so that's gone. This is this little log that not it's not good. I don't think that and all th these kinds of things in here. All and that that's not that pretty. Um, so I'm going to simplify the whole thing. I think the colors are really cool. The the colors in here are super beautiful and soft. Let's see, um, yeah. If I go like this, see that that gives me that this is that the color, uh, so I can get an idea on the iPad. See, see this, what I did was it has a color picker, and I can go around here like that in the iPad and see what the computer says these colors are. So that that is kind of helpful. It can give you a little heads up about color in the scene that you might use to pre-select some sticks. Um, so that that's kind of cool. The iPad's pretty cool for that. Uh, this program that I'm in right now is called Procreate and it has a lot of capabilities and I like it. So, okay, so 
From here, let me show you what I did yesterday. I did a version of this painting, and um, I'll just share that with you here. That's my little study of, of the reference photo. Now, I think that it's turned out really nice. I think it has a lot of aspects that are um, great, but let's think about what might be even better with it. Let's see, I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come and make my thing red. Okay, so a couple things I think that this, these guys, oops, not red enough. Let's see there, there we go. The, the, these guys in here get a little bit too um, even and repetitive, so I'm gonna try to break that up a little bit. Um, what else? I, I would like to, I'm gonna, oops, let me get rid of this. I would like to see a tiny bit more separation between this shape and, and, this, and this background. I'm gonna work on that. Also, this color right here, which is this pretty um, mauve pink, you can see I've got on the color picker, um, is really neat. And I think I just, I, I, I want to bring that up a little bit more. I want, I want, a, I want a little bit more of that. Um, so actually with this program, you can actually go in and make some edits on a painting on your, on your photo that, oh, I'm going to work on this. And um, so, you, so you don't have to overwork your painting. You can just make some changes right here on, in Procreate and then make them to your, your piece, which I think is not something I do a lot, but I, if I'm working on something really large, or I actually did that with a large um, acrylic painting this week too. Okay, so that's kind of my plan. I've got a lot of information to be able to um, do this. I feel pretty, pretty happy about it, pretty confident. So let's move over and get painting. I'm going to move the iPad, so I have, can I, let's see, I don't think I'm going to need those darks up there, so I bet you that's going to be okay. Or should we move that off of there? Kevin? Do you think we well, should I mean, be um, just be careful, you just don't okay. knock it off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> ah! All right. Okay. So, uh, where are we? All right, so I'm using the blue pastel mat today, and uh, here's, here's the little painting. Here's the small version. Um, and it's, you know, I'm doing something just a little bit bigger. Okay. I'm not gonna recreate that, and you know what, I'm also going to put this piece up as well because there's aspects of this piece that just kind of energetically, while I was painting it, I was just like in a really great flow state and I really enjoyed doing it. So some of that I just want to have a feel for. So I'm gonna put it there while I'm painting today. I always think that that's a really good idea to do, to surround yourself with what things that you did well <laughs> or that you want to build on, what's working. Even if it's not a finished piece, if there's one little section of a painting or something that you worked on that's like, okay, I like that, that's working, that could be valuable for you and you can apply it to another piece. Okay. All right, guys, it's really hot here. I'm feeling it. So we'll see how we do today with that. I'm going to put my hair back. All right. Okay. Fun stuff. Okay. All righty. All right, so pretty simple compositionally, really. It's this nice big shape in here. 
this guy. And it's got this kind of cool gesture to it. Um, here's the bank. I'm not going to include that um, too much of this. Uh, I have some kind of idea of grasses up here, but not um, overdoing that. Here's some grasses here. Now, how do I want this? Do I don't want this to come right to this point. I think I'm going to end it here. That'll give me more space to get in that beautiful pink that I know that I want. And here's the edge of the bank back here, kind of that kind of a mauvey purple thing. And then there's a light bit and some the grass. Right here, there's a nice um, dark that sort of helps to silhouette this. It's a very um, helpful little shape. And then, then um, here's, the, here's the thing that I, on the whole, would just tend to make overly dark. These, these guys. Because they look dark. And if I put, if, if I brought this into, let's, we can even do it right now. Can we go back to the iPad for just a second? Um, if we go, oops. If we go back here and we go to the photo reference, and so let's go to the color picker on the photo reference and see, you could see that it's saying to me that those trees are pretty dark. Look, almost black. And that's the sky, that's the, the green. But so I don't want those that dark. I don't, that'll make my painting look not nearly as good as the what I what I ended up doing. So I, I don't want that dark. All right. So I am going to go ahead and get some dark in for this cast shadow in the water, cast shadow and reflection, because that that area of contrast is important and pretty. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay. Now I did use quite a lot of Giro's while I was at this. And so that was kind of fun. I'm going to pick out a couple things. So I'm thinking about the sh kind of shadow side of this, this guy. Um, let's see. Yeah, I like this one. It's a little warmer. Um, Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty warm day here. So this is the shadow side of this guy. I'm gonna add in this kind of um, gray. All right, so just getting that in quickly. And then moving to the light side. And I want something a little bit yummier. Let's see. No, that's not it. The trouble with having done it before is then you get you get kind of like married to what you did the first time. That's okay. All 
Okay, and then some, some of these grasses in here. And there's one little tuft right there. There's some foreground here. There's Now I'm going to come along and get, this is part of the bank. Oops, up, oh, I just broke one. Ah, I know what I want. I, there's a, this, this guy. I love this color, this chestnut color. Yeah, and of course, everybody, we really appreciate it when you like the videos. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everybody, we really appreciate it when you, um, when you like the videos. That's great. Today we introduced a few new things. We uh, yeah, we did the, the garden tour and the yeah, we got some fun, fun stuff going on. Yeah, it's always fun to me. The Procreate's really a a great little tool. I've been using it, but um, we just discovered that we could add that into the stream. So that's yeah, and we're probably going to incorporate it a little more into the into the videos as well. Yeah. It's a, it's a great tool. Sky. Um, just trying to get the whole thing kind of rolling a little bit. There's the trees. Do you know Fletcher. offhand, Marla? I know that your Giro set was a gift, but um, yeah. do you know um, what that set was? Did it have like no, a... I don't know what it was. No, I don't. It was. It's old. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly. I do know that um, with with regards to Giro's, they're very nice pastels. And if I um, if I had if I didn't have any, 
and I wanted to try them out. I, I, I do, in particular, love their, um, they have a gray set that I, um, new, neutrals, I think they call it. Um, it's just wonderful. So they are a little pricey, so there's that. Um, Here's the reflection. I want that to come right, right down towards you. And I want that pink. Okay, I gotta find it. Let it, it's sort of this. Now that's not what I used. I think I used this. Maybe this and this. Oh, and there's some purple in there. Definitely, that's nice. Look at this, really. Ooh, that's fun. And just leave it, leave it be like that for a bit. And I think, you know, in this case, just kind of simplifying this uh, foreground shape is a, a good deal. There's a lot going on in this little painting. Uh, doesn't need it. Doesn't need more. And so I'm going to get a little bit of... carving out some shapes. this little tuft here, so I'm going to get that in. It's cute. Okay, so background, that background, that's the thing that's going to pull it all together and that I'm kind of anxious about um, and anxious to get what I want back there. So um, let's see, I started with, um, did I start with, let's see if this was it. I think that was it. That I start, eh, I don't, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe I started with this. Yeah, I probably did. So now the one thing that I, I, I wanted a variety of, more variety in the intervals back here. So I'm just going to get an overarching shape in and then kind of nice and light and airy and then cut in with my sky. I think I want a little bit of kind of purple in here as well. And oh, that's too bright. See, I should test. I'm getting, you know, I try to go a little fast and then I make a mistake. So just lightening up, just just lightening up the value of everything. Just a, not not completely so that I have no that everything super compressed in value, but so that I just, um, overall, that it's a little bit lighter. 
so I can push that. And that works because, you know, I'm, I'm really going for something really light there. And so against this, that, that makes it pop. If I start too dark, it, it's, not, it's not necessary to go that dark. It's really, really not. Just gonna carve a couple of shapes here. I see. That's good. Okay, now I think I'm in pretty good shape. Um, I'm going to get that sky in. And I see the sky as really, really light pink. That's what I used for the other piece. I think that will work out. And then I, get, I have to work on this a little bit more, but I want to get that sky in first. Maybe this. I think this. Okay, here we go. Now notice how I'm coming right across the edge. Don't be afraid to do that. You're going to get that nice soft edge and you can still carve into it. So some little spots that are harder, but letting it be really, and this is in the background, so it's, it's fine for it to be soft, diffuse, even though in the photo it's pretty right there. But here's, this... a quick, uh, Marla, here's a quick question mm -hmm. about um, one of your pastel choices. Uh, why use that bright green warm stripe in the back of the landmass if a cooler green would push the distance back further? Right here? I probably don't believe that. Is, yeah. Um, well, in this case, I'm I'm. It's pretty sh shallow depth of field overall in the scene. It's not as though I'm depicting a super distant mountain or anything. It's pretty um, upfront. So my my choice of making this lighter is helping to to give space between. Um, all the elements. When I get done, you will know where things are sitting in space. Um, and this little pop is actually separating. Th this this guy gets to be a little teeny bit of an in silhouette and this light behind it. I just think it looks good. And it's going to help me develop this kind of focal point that's right here because the I'm going to have the reflections in the water here. So all these kind of rules that, you know, we sort of set up for ourselves, you know, I really tr try to have them be rules of thumb, okay, not, you know, um, because that way, you know, once you know the rules, you can break them, you know, like, uh, it, musicians, you know, once you have that foundation, um, then you can play and jam and improvise. So I'm really trying here to get a little bit more variety <laughs> in this. can get really tricky to do. 
Is we, we're, we're pattern makers and we really attach to those. It's looking a little better than the other. Be softer. I'm going to come and do that rather than have a dark behind this um, tree. But I am going to come in. There's a couple spots that could be good to get some sky in. So changing it up a little. Just clean this up so it can see it better. Okay. And um, just another quick question. Should the reflection be darker than the sky? Yes. A little bit. And again, rules of thumb, not rules. All right, now let's work on that foreground tree. Let's see. This guy. this idea that there's trees back there. A little more color. play with this color in here a little bit more. I just want to lift it up. How did you decide on this blue pastel mat? And also, how do you decide whether to do an underpainting or not? I'm going to answer that after I get done. All right, I'll leave you alone. Okay, now 
good spot. I think it's a good spot to be in. I love when the water has the has brown in it like that. It just really works. Okay, water.
Yeah, playing with that water, it's good. Let's see what we got. I want this a little bit. More, a little more action going on. I want this guy a little lighter. Maybe. Yeah. I still think that these guys are a little dark and I think I'm just going to go in there and push them back just a little bit. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty good. All right, what else? up a little bit. It's going to read a little bit better.
right? I'm having, so this needs to, I think, come up a little bit. I'm gonna take a step back. See it. See if that water is doing what it needs to do. It's getting there. It's pretty close. Let's see. That's not the right one. All right, I think I'm right on it. Okay, I'm gonna just take just a minute and answer a couple questions if we've got them. So the question was how do I select the paper that I'm going to use? Yeah, I think it's I think it's it's nice. Yeah, good. Good. Um, yeah, so how do I select the paper that I'm going to use? Well, that's a really that's a tricky question because um, actually the other day we we were filming something and I really wanted the blue pastel mat, and I didn't have it. So um, usually in that case, I'll find something that will work. Uh, uh, the reason I, it was a it was a wave painting that we were doing, so that blue pastel mat made you know perfect sense, analogous to the reference photo. There are other times when I'm going to choose something that's complementary. Especially, for, for instance, that works really well when there's a lot of green foliage and you want something a little sparkly and vibrating to pick something that's a little bit more on the complementary side. It, so it really all depends on m your approach, also <laughs> the availability of the papers. Um, so much of that comes into play. So I don't have a, I don't have a one-size-fits-all answer to that. Um, I wish I did, but I don't. Um, so I'm always judging the the reference with you know kind of what I'm feeling about how you know how I feel is the best way to sort of get into the scene and, and approach it what's the other question do you remember um, when do you decide to do an underpainting oh when do I decide to do underpainting? you know I think underpainting is something that's really um, fun to do and a lot of times um, I'm going to do an underpainting just to kind of mix it up for myself to make it a little bit different and exciting. Um, and an underpainting to me, there's so many, again, so many ways you could approach an underpainting. Underpainting could 
really be an underpainting, meaning it's really, you're painting the elements in the scene, say it's a, it's got figures in it, you're gonna paint the figures in the underpainting. Or it can be more like, so let's, let's go back to the iPad for a minute. Um, on the, um, this layer um, that I have, let's see, let me get uh, that. So an underpainting could be something that's a little bit more like this, just color fields that are just giving you that sort of abstract, really spontaneous um, mode that that's really fun to explore. So you're kind of, in, in, in the case of this little painting that I did the other day, I'm definitely just responding to the colors that I see in the scene and then almost kind of digging the painting out from having put down those color fields. So for me, you have to just find a few kind of tools in your toolkit that work for you, the way you respond to something and the way you see it. I'm, like I said, I always am trying to figure out the best way for me to sort of get in there <laughs> and uh, do the thing that I have in mind. So that's kind of about it. Yep. Another question. Yep. Um, yep. Is, it, is it better to use printed photos, reference photos, or the iPad? Which do you prefer? Well, we've, there's been a lot of um, back and forth on that and for me. I, the iPad um, has the colors different. It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a device that's using um, additive color and a printed photo is subtractive color. And so there's a whole lot of, you know, stuff in there about that. And so depending on your device, it's going to be usually much cooler um, than a printed um, output. But then the printed output is, um, you know, variable based on your, your printer and so on. I, I actually don't think that it matters. And I know that's, you know, weird to say. Because I'm not trying to match the color exactly at all. Like you can see that it really isn't. I'm taking some cues from it, but I'm not trying to match it. I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not married to the photo. I'm not that's not my goal when I'm painting. I'm trying to make a piece of art. So um, the, what really matters to me more is the orchestration of the values and the orchestration of the colors that you put down. And, and that's, that's it, yeah. So let's see, what else? Um, what why else? have you done this? painting this piece, why well, have you done this relatively the same multiple times? Oh, because that's, um, well, I did it relatively the same today because um, I like it and I wanted to paint it for you guys again. I like how it turned out. If I were to do that on my own, if I were to paint a scene, the same reference photo on my own, I would be doing it to sort of riff on it. To like here, here's my here's my one idea, and now I'm gonna do some kind of variation on that idea. And just incrementally I might get looser and looser and looser, more and more abstract, the more versions that I explore. And I find that that is so liberating and so such a great approach. Um, the first time that you know you're working with something, I think the tendency is to paint more of what you see, and then as you go along, you can paint more of what you want. <laughs> and so, it's to me, it's really very, very powerful to paint something multiple times. But yeah, you're right. Usually, if I were to you know, do something a couple times, I would change it up. But um, yesterday I had so much fun painting this. I'm like, this turned out, and I want to, that's what I want to do for, um, for the live stream. So, yeah. All right.
All right, I guess that's about it for today. And um, just make sure you um, go over to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and see what we have going on over there. And uh, we are halfway through our summer sale on the monthly pastel painting lessons. So it's right now it's $37 off uh, your um, any order. And um, it's a really fabulous value, I think, that um, um, if you poke around on the website, I think you'll get a really good sense of what's going on there. And, and so we have lessons in pastel, obviously, watercolor, oil, and acrylic. And soon, something else. <laughs> we're working on we're working on some other stuff, so it's pretty pretty exciting. All right, I guess anything else there, Kevin? Um, yeah. No? Okay. Can you talk a little bit about pricing paintings? Pricing paintings. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, I, generally speaking, um, in, think that pricing by the square inch is usually a really good way to go because it's you're not devaluing one piece over the other. You're giving a you know just a a value of your work um, that's standardized. So. I don't think it's a good idea like, oh, I really like this painting. This one's going to be 900 and the one that's the same size as 600. I don't think that that's really, you know, super wise. If you're selling a lot and clients can see your work in multiple platforms, multiple places, it's, it's, try, it's try, to, try to keep that as standard as you can so you don't run into like, oh, why is this this and why is this that? Um, Different media I price differently because usually because of materials and framing concerns. So that's kind of that. Yep. Okay. All right, you guys. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope you have a great weekend. Hope it's nice and cool wherever you are. It's going to heat up here a little bit too much for my taste, but it'll be okay. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, have a good weekend. See you next time. All right, bye.